On an early morning in late June last year, I embarked on a journey to a place 16-year-old girls don't normally travel to. I don't mean the darkest corners of Africa, as my parents' friends accuse them of, but of Hefei, China, the home of the Institute of Plasma Physics at the Chinese Academy of Sciences. It's not like I'm an overseas travel virgin. My parents had taken my brother, sister, and me all over the world to tourist traps like Uzbekistan. <laughs> but I was traveling to China alone, not knowing anybody and only speaking high school Chinese. I was to make my way over a thousand miles south to the Anhui province where I was to intern for six weeks. After taking an environmental science course last year, I became deeply interested in, in the development of alternative energies, so much that my hope for a career as a sustainable architect would one day satisfy the needs of both the environment and society. My dad runs a plasma physics research and development company that specializes in environmental te technologies. One of his partners, a former professor at UCLA, arranged my internship. The first conversation with my future boss, Dr. Yu Tan Song, sounded a little something like this. There's this petite, I prefer that word better than short, red-headed Jewish girl who has an unwavering desire to study superheated ionized gas abroad over the summer in rural China. What do you think? Much to both his and my surprise, Dr. Song offered me an internship in his tokamak design division at the institute he heads. This government-funded organization is designated to conduct research into nuclear fusion. Over the last 60 years, an enormous amount of research has been, has been conducted on nuclear fusion and its potential to solve mankind's energy dependency. However, with the recent nuclear accidents at Chernobyl, Three, Three Mile Island, and Fukushima, increased skepticism has been raised regarding the benefits of nuclear power. However, I should point out, all three of these accidents occurred in nuclear fission plants, not nuclear fusion sites. Nuclear fission and nuclear fusion are very different concepts. In nuclear fission, a large isotope, say uranium-235, for example, is broken down into smaller atoms, releasing energy, some of which is in the form of radiation. In nuclear fusion, a large, two small isotopes of hydrogen are combined, creating massive amounts of energy with only small amounts of emitted radiation. Once I acclimatized myself as the object of the science community's curiosity, I began my work on EAST, the Experimental Advanced Superconducting Tokamak, actually located on site at the Institute. My main goal was to study different components that could be used inside the diverter, the device inside the tokamak that ultimately harvests the energy created inside the nuclear reactor. Nuclear reactors, in my case tokamaks, employ two isotopes of hydrogen, deuterium and tritium, as a fuel for the reaction. These atoms are injected into a device called a torus, a large donut-shaped device that magnetically confines nuclei in order for the reaction to occur. Heated to upwards of 150 million degrees Celsius, these nuclei, nuclei quickly turn into plasma, a hot electrically charged gas. With the release of this energy in the form of heat, the diverter absorbs this energy, transforms it into steam, which spins a turbine, which generates electricity. Harnessing this energy and transforming it into a safe, reliable power source is the holy grail of nuclear fusion research. However, the problem with, the problem with existing tokamaks is that the heat generated by the fusion reaction rapidly escapes the plasma. So an, external, so an external energy device must be provided in order to keep the reaction going. From both an economic and environmental standpoint, developing nuclear fusion as a new source of energy is a no-brainer. At least that's what they say at the Institute. The fuel for the reaction, deuterium and tritium, the fuel for the reaction, deuterium and tritium, are safe, abundant, and cheap whereas uranium-235, used in fission reactors, encompass many risks. The mining of uranium results in the release of radon, which results in an increase in lung cancer in many uranium miners. 
Uranium also has the potential to be siphoned off and used as a substrate in nuclear weapons. With any nuclear fission reactor, there's always a risk of a meltdown due to an accident or malfunction, as was witnessed last March when this occurred in three of the reactors at the plant in Japan. In any fusion reactor, there is no risk of a meltdown, simply due to the nature of the structure of the reactor. Finally, because there is so little emitted radiation from a nuclear fusion reactor, this will benefit both the surrounding communities of people as well as the environment. The United States is currently involved in a project called ITER, the International Thermonuclear Experimental Reactor, located in southern France. The United States, the European Union, and six other countries are collaborating to create a tokamak that will become a prototype to change the adjective from potential to commercial for nuclear fusion. The challenge ITER faces is becoming the largest and first self-sustaining reactor that will one day become a prototype for commercial facilities. Despite funding issues brought on by the federal government's budgetary restrictions, research is continuing and is making nuclear fusion a strong substitute for fossil fuel energy. So what does the theme nuclear fusion have to do with, with togetherness? Everything. In order to effectively solve the mankind's dependence on depletable energy resources, collabor collaboration, is collaboration is imperative. The work being done at ITER is international. The world science community is collaborating to create a revolutionary piece of technology that will one day literally change how we interact with nature and with ourselves. The dream, the dream of cheap, limitless energy will one day bring our world closer together. 